Thank you. 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 Thank your vote counts just as much as anyone else's, whether there's uh, one of you or 10,000 of you. I'm sure many of you, and young man, I hope you'll pay attention to this. There's a lot of races all over the United States that have been won by one vote. So every vote does count, so thank you all for being here. Um, I would like to start out by telling you a little bit about myself and what I've done in my lifetime, kind of go over a resume. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, when I get to the end of that, tell you about some programs I initiated or helped develop while I was a, a judge here in uh, Hillsborough County in the 13th Judicial Circuit. And then I'll get to my platform if you'll uh, let me do that. Um, again, my name's Dick Greco Jr. I am a native of Tampa, Florida. I'm third generation. Also, I have my son here, uh, Garrett Greco. He's 26 years old. He's the fourth generation. He is also my uh, campaign manager. Um, I uh, attended all local schools, Gory Wilson Plant. Uh, after uh, that, I went to Auburn University. I graduated with a degree in law enforcement. Uh, after that, I went to uh, out to uh, Houston, Texas, uh, where I was a deputy sheriff while I went to law school, uh, worked my way through law school doing that, came back to Tampa after that, and I uh, worked as an assistant county attorney in the construction litigation department. Also, I was an assistant state attorney, you might have heard referred to as a prosecutor here in Hillsborough County. I worked in several law firms that I own myself, my own small businesses, Dick Greco Jr. Attorney of Law, uh, also James and Greco, and then another law firm, Malloy James and Greco. I also worked with a couple larger firms that either were uh, local or worked on a statewide basis with them in the Tampa office. But most of my adult and working life was spent as a judge here in Hillsborough County, either on the county court bench or the circuit court bench, or I was also called and was a senior judge here. Um, a senior judge could be compared to something like a substitute teacher. What happens is um, sometimes, and you can imagine the size of the court dockets, a judge uh, becomes ill or something happens and she or he cannot perform that day. Well, rather than send everyone home and have them come back, if most of you have ever been to court, sometimes missing a court date is kind of like missing a doctor's appointment. You've got to wait three, four months to come back. So they'll call in a senior judge who's certified by the Supreme Court of Florida to come in and hear the cases. And you can do that from uh, anywhere in the state, from Pensacola all the way down to Key West up to uh, Jacksonville. But a couple of the programs that uh, I handled while I was there, and, and while I was on the bench, I was uh, presiding over criminal divisions, also presided over civil divisions, small claim divisions, uh, family law divisions, probate divisions, and domestic violence divisions. But one of the programs I initiated and helped develop while I was a county court judge was called the Sheriff's Jail Work Crew. And we heard something about picking up trash and garbage. I think Mr. Suarez mentioned that. But what would happen is this. Uh, in the misdemeanor divisions, many of the uh, punishments might include something like community service. Uh, misdemeanors are crimes punishable by uh, county jail time less than one year. If it's over a year, you go to the state prison and then it's a felony. But what we did was we got together and we decided, could there be a way that we could have people actually work in community service? So we got together with the sheriff, and the sheriff was very cooperative back then, got together with the probation offices through the Salvation Army at that time, and we would have persons who had the 50 hours of community service work, especially in cases involving DUI, have to go out and pick up litter. You might have seen them somewhere uh, all over the county, they would have to do that. So that was one program we got going. Another program that uh, we initiated here, or I initiated, was the Drive Legal Again program. It's called DLAP. Uh, Drive Legal Again program was initiated because what happened was we saw, I saw, that there was a great need uh, to have people's driver's license restored. Not people who had their license suspended because of a crime they had necessarily committed. In other words, not because it was suspended because of a DUI or because they had been driving recklessly, et cetera but their licenses were suspended because possibly they got a speeding ticket, which the minimum at that time, the minimum was $157, and they couldn't pay that. And of course, you know, if you can't pay your 
traffic ticket, what will happen then is your license gets suspended. And a lot of people don't know this. You get three driving license suspended charges in the state of Florida, your license then gets revoked for five years, which becomes even a uh, higher crime. So what we did was we brought in a company from Miami. I had to work with the state attorney's office to get their approval, the public defender, a lot of the uh, the private attorneys, so they wouldn't get too mad and angry about this because they felt they were going to lose business. But we brought all the parties together for that and said, can we come up with some type of program or idea where we can restore person's licenses? Because as you know, without a license, it's very hard to get around. It's hard to cash a check. It's hard to do anything, even get a job. So what we ha did was we had to get the clerk's office involved because what happens in uh, Hillsborough County, and this is all by statute, it can't happen. After a certain point, and it doesn't take too long, you owe money on your driver's license, the state can turn it over and the clerk's office can turn it over to the collection agency. By law, they could charge 40 cents more, 40% 40 more for you to get that money paid and out of collection so you can get your driver's license back, not counting the penalties you have to pay and the interest and those types of things. So we worked along with everyone to do that, and that was a big thing to the clerk's office because they would lose money by doing that, but they agreed to do it because it was for the better good. So we worked out a program where persons could get their licenses or what they owed back to something normal, go through a payoff system so that they could get their license back so they could go to work, have their license, and pay off what they owed over a period of time. Um, the other program that I initiated and uh, developed here was the uh, Homeless Initiative. What we found was in the city of Tampa, um, we were having an inordinate amount of homeless persons who were being arrested, lawfully so, but for very minor type crimes. Most of these people didn't have bail money. They could not get out of jail, but it would be things like sleeping on a park bench or uh, you know, eating on the streets or doing things that uh, soliciting on the highways, perhaps you've seen some of them doing those types of things, stepping in traffic. So they'd get arrested for these minor type crimes, be taken to the Hillsborough County Jail. Bail would be set very, very low, sometimes even $25, and they could not get out of jail. So we got the powers to be together again and tried to work out a program. And what would happen is this. We would have uh, a homeless initiative court, because most of these people were homeless. Uh, and what would happen is they would come into court. We uh, worked along with Veterans Affairs. We worked along with, uh, with the Sheriff's Office. We worked along with Tampa Police Department, the City Attorney's Office. We would have those persons come in. If they would agree to try to get some help from these various agencies, if uh, uh, you know they qualified, then we would let them leave the courtroom. We would let them come back in approximately 30 days when we would do that court docket again. If they had come back and they had tried to get some help through these various agencies and they had not committed another crime, even a minor one, we would dismiss the case against them. The city attorney's office would dismiss the case. I would get down off the bench. We'd come down and put my arm around them and uh, we'd take a photo and everyone would clap for them because they successfully completed. We had a large board and we would place their picture up on the board. And we reduced the recidivism rate for a lot of those cases by about 50%, which was uh, really uh, an outstanding uh, number. And probably one of the most outstanding things there is Homeless people probably showed up in court in greater numbers than persons like you and me, which I never could understand uh, how, how they would come to court, but they did. So we were successful in those types of programs. Um, I'd like to go into a little bit now of my own um, um, platform. I too have three uh, words that I use. The first is congestion, the second is infrastructure, and the third is one I see that's on the church signs here and the one outside, and it's connected. Um, of course, this one's connecting, but outside it does say get connected. So start with uh, the first one, congestion. Congestion, I think, takes in everything that we talk about with transportation, et cetera. I think all of us can see that is probably the most obvious problem and issue that we have in the city of Tampa, county of Hillsborough, and basically our region as a whole if we drive around. I think all of us understand that there's going to be some traffic congestion at certain times, and there's probably not a whole lot we can do about that early in the mornings or later in the afternoons during the morning and afternoon rush hours, but it seems to me that there's an inordinate amount of congestion at all types of inordinate times uh, during the day. So that is my first word that I uh, 
have in my platform. And again, it covers everything, transportation and those types of things. Uh, a lot of things you hear about here, you can ask questions about tonight. Some people have plans, even the government has a plan called the 2040 plan to try to address some of these issues. My second word I use is infrastructure. Infrastructure is everything the city uh, has maintenance or ownership above and below the ground. Some of it you can't see. Some of our pipes uh, for water, for sewer, for storm water. Um, then above ground, of course, we have beaches, we have parks, we have uh, sidewalks and we have roads. Anything that we have uh, that the city owns and has to maintain generally is our infrastructure. But my most important word is connected. Okay, and connected. Uh, by that I mean I feel that the city and the most important thing the mayor can do is get connected back first with our neighborhoods. In other words, I think everyone here, those of you in this room and in every neighborhood, before we start talking about all these plans that we're going to do, we need to get back with the people in the neighborhoods and talk to them about those plans and or make sure and see what they want, what they need, what they should have. They need to feel that they are connected with the city, that they're not being ignored, that they're not being disenfranchised, that their thoughts, their ideas are being listened to. Also, you're going to hear a lot about plans. I don't have an exact plan. The reason for that is there really is no way to implement any of these plans without being connected with all of these other entities we hear about here. You might hear about CSX Railroad. Most of you know we've heard West Shore Boulevard. The city doesn't own West Shore Boulevard. We hear about I-275. We don't own I-275. We don't own Bayshore Boulevard. We don't own Bay to Bay. We don't own Gandy. We don't own a lot of things here. The city of Tampa doesn't even have a bus. We don't own Hardline. We don't own the airport. That's the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority. Unless we have a leader, that's willing to bring in everyone here, meaning the county commission that's going to have to be on board for network. Also Heartline, also St. Petersburg, also uh, Pasco County, Polk County, Manatee County. Nothing will get done. We can't cross these roads on our own, so we need a mayor, a strong mayor, who will come in, not as a dictator, but someone who can communicate, someone who can get everyone to the table, get people to compromise, to decide what we're going to do and what would be best for our community. That's what I'm all about. Connection, that's the biggest thing I feel with not only the neighborhoods, but all of these entities, including things like the school board. Schools are very important. The mayor is not the superintendent of schools. The mayor is not uh, even on the school board, but the mayor needs to use the mayor's office as a bully pulpit to say how important education is. It reduces crime when you have a good education system. It's great for the economy. It provides jobs. And not just for our uh, elementary, for our middle, and for our high schools, but we have schools of higher education here, but also our technical schools. We need to work along with private industry so that we can have mentorships and internships. So persons who wish to proceed uh, uh, to uh, engage in those types of technical careers are able to do that also. So. Dick Greco Jr., I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have tonight. I ask for your vote on March 5th. Thank you very much. Okay, so now, do you guys...